this thing. You said it was all in his head. And what have you done? Nothing. What is wrong with my boy? I don't understand. I love you, Lord. She was too. <laughs> Welcome to Cord Killers, our mission to report the intel from the front lines of the cord cutting revolution so that you have the information you need to know to watch what you want, when you want, where you want, on whatever device you want. I'm Tom Merritt. I was not here last week because I was traveling. This week, Brian Brushwood got double brush booked, uh, but thankfully we have Sarah Lane with us Hooray! today. Thank you, Sarah Lane, for joining us. How's it going? Um, really good. And thank you so much to Jackie Hearn, who has diligently... Uh, tried to book me for several months, and the star is finally aligned, so I'm so happy to be here. I'm glad it worked out. Bryce Castillo, our producer, will be uh, alongside as always as well. How are you, Bryce? I'm doing good. How are you guys? I'm doing fine. Uh, of course, we just saw a little snippet from the Stranger Things 2 trailer. That's coming out October 27th on Netflix, and they had a sneak peek bit at London Comic Con as well. Yeah, it's a good-looking trailer. I... Um... I was surprised because I saw the the clip from the the London Comic Con trailer and realized that a person who I thought was a new kid was not a new kid. She just has hair. She just has different <laughs> hair. Yeah. Uh, she she introduced the clip, as a matter of fact. All right, folks, let's get right into it with our primary target. Disney launched an expanded version of its Disney Movies Anywhere service, just called Movies Anywhere. Uh, and it's not even just expanded, it's it's brand new. If you have a Disney Movies Anywhere account, you gotta move over to Movies Anywhere. Uh, it's not like it's just becoming that. But it will let you access movies purchased from Amazon, Google, Apple, or Vudu, all in one place. Movies Anywhere uses the key chess technology that DMA, Disney Movies Anywhere, pioneered. Uh, studios involved beyond Disney include 20th Century Fox, Universal, and Warner Brothers. They are in discussions with Paramount and Lionsgate. So some movies won't show up. Even if you own them on Google, they won't show up in Movies Anywhere and they won't cross over to the other places. But a lot more than just Disney movies will cross over. And if you haven't used Disney Movies Anywhere or Ultraviolet before, the way it works is you buy it on iTunes and then it shows up in Google, it shows up in Vudu, it shows up in Amazon, which has always been fantastic. The problem is only Disney movies did that. And if you were in ultraviolet, the, the only participants were like Vudu and Fandango Now and a couple other less used services. So I've been putting this thing through my paces. Uh, so far, it's worked fairly well. It had some delays when it first launched uh, where things weren't showing up. It took me couple of tries to get Voodoo hooked up. Once I got all the retailers on board, though, everything finally showed up. Uh, and I, I, the only quirks that I've run into are buying a movie from Movies Anywhere in iTunes uh, didn't immediately have the movie show up in Movies Anywhere. It immediately showed up in iTunes, which could be confusing for some people. They're like, well, I just bought it. Where is it? And vice versa. I bought a movie that I know is available on Movies Anywhere, because I searched for it there, on Amazon, Lawrence of Arabia, and that has not showed up on Movies Anywhere, and it's been like five days. Uh, so there are some bugs, there are some kinks to work out here. We also had a, a DTNS listener who pointed out that uh, there are two versions of Citizen Kane for sale on Amazon. He bought the wrong one. That one isn't part of the program, apparently. Sarah, I'm curious if you've tried this out or if this sounds interesting to you. Um, no, we talked about it on Friday on DTNS and, uh, I have not, um, we're actually going to talk about Plex later in the show, which is how I get all my television these days. But, um, no, I mean, the fact that there are some bumps is not super surprising. Uh, you know, that's kind of to be expected, but I don't know. The fact that Amazon is coming to Apple TV, uh, soon makes this not that interesting to me. Well, yes and no though. I mean, do you have any movies where, 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 let me ask it this way. Do you, where do you have your movies stored? Where have you bought most of your movies? iTunes. 
So then, if you're if you're yeah. iTunes on Apple TV, then this isn't going to be exciting. If exactly. you're like me though, I mean, and I've got it's, like it's a great. few on Google. I mean, it's, it sounds like it's a great service, but it's sort of like the way Hulu kind of seemed great, and then I ended up not paying for it anymore. Yeah, I I, I turned around on Hulu since then, but yeah. Uh, so so here's the thing though. If Vudu has a movie for cheaper than iTunes, you can go to Movies Anywhere on your web browser, buy it for cheaper, and still watch it in iTunes and on your Apple TV. Well, that so is shop a good value. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce, I know you played around with it a bit this week. What do you think of it so far? Yeah, I uh, I, I signed up for it because they... they it will give you like five free movies if you There's that sign too, up yeah. and connect your account. And they're pretty good movies. You get the new Jason Bourne, the Lego movie that was good, Big Hero 6. I don't know. It's it's an interesting slate of free movies. Uh, so I used it this weekend to host a little movie party. And I didn't even uh, really... I went and bought the movie on Amazon, uh, not even thinking whether it would be a part of the service. And it showed up pretty quickly on my Apple TV, which meant that I was able to buy something on Amazon and watch it on my Apple TV, which, you know, is otherwise impossible right now. And, you know, well, and also you can buy it on iTunes and watch it on a Roku. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Through movies anywhere. If it's again, if it's part of one of the participating movie theater, movie studios. Yeah. And that was the other thing that got me is uh, I ended up buying another movie this weekend um, because I wanted to watch it on my TV because I had been watching uh, a similar a similar show on it on TV. And it's not a part of movies anywhere. And uh, it was pretty cheap, so I wasn't super bummed. But uh, I, I'm, I, 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 it, I just was a little, it was a little flip where I wasn't even thinking about it and it worked perfectly. And then I really wanted it to work and it didn't. Uh, but I, I don't know. I think this is a cool idea. And I'm, I'm glad that it's outside of the Disney thing. Now, were you using Ultraviolet a lot, Tom? Or was it just Voodoo that you had used? I mean, my wife works for Fandango, so we actually get some Fandango movies, and Ultraviolet's nice for that because then it moves them over to Voodoo. Um, but that's kind of only thing Ultraviolet was good for, mm -hmm. is if I bought things on something that was part of Ultraviolet, or if I bought a DVD or Blu-ray that had an Ultraviolet copy, I could add it to Voodoo uh, no matter where it came from. But, but I think Ultraviolet fades away now. What I'm very curious about is if the other stores out there principally fandango now but but there's a few others whether those ultraviolet stores will end up joining movies anywhere yeah i mean i guess it'll just see and and paramount is still not a part of movies anywhere is that right not yet uh but paramount and lionsgate are supposedly in talks and if those talks go well and they get them involved then this is going to be the thing that everyone should use. I'm not saying everybody will use it. Again, if you're if you're all in one ecosystem, if you've got a Fire TV and you only buy from Amazon, you're probably not going to care about this. But but if if you have ever strayed outside of any of the ecosystems, this bridges the gaps. So does uh, I know when you use it on the Apple TV and on the iOS device, it'll take you to the iTunes store. If you were on say Roku and you went to buy a movie, where would you be buying it from? It'll take you to all four. That's that's the Apple lock-in. If you're on iOS, it'll make you buy from iTunes because otherwise Apple requires 30% of the cost of anything you buy in the app. Mm -hmm. If you're on the browser on iOS or if you're on the browser on any device, it'll let you choose which retailer you go to. Now, Oh, wow. Yeah. The problem is it doesn't give you the price. So you have to click through on all four if you want to do some price comparisons. Oh, right? that's interesting. Huh. Yeah, because I, I, I saw that it took me straight to iTunes and you could even it looked like you could get some bonus content if iTunes had that bonus content on yeah, yeah. Movies Anywhere. That that also is a good synergy of, of content and, and the retailers. Well, and I've done that. I, I've bought things on Vudu, uh, particularly because I knew if Disney movies, particularly uh, Marvel movies like Guardians of the Galaxy and knowing that they would then show up on iTunes, Google and Amazon because it was part of Disney movies anywhere. Uh, so I'll probably continue to do that unless there's a cheaper way because it really doesn't matter. Yeah. They just show up. Yeah. One thing I don't think works, I don't think you can buy something on an ultraviolet partner and then have that show up on Voodoo and then because Voodoo is part of Movies Anywhere, have it show up everywhere else. I think it tracks that. Oh, weird. Um, and yeah, uh, Beatmaster wants to know if the movies you buy elsewhere get the UHD free upgrade. I, I believe so. 
I, be, I believe if you buy it UHD, uh, if you buy a, a, a title that's UHD and you're on an Apple TV 4K, it'll still play in 4K. You won't be able to download it in 4K, but it'll play it in 4K. I wonder if that'll work with uh, the retro ret- retroactively making HD purchases on iTunes 4K, yeah. if, if that'll also go forward. Sarah, has any of this convinced you to to dip your toe into movies anywhere at all? Uh, yes, actually, you guys have been very convincing. Um, if I didn't have a situation that worked for me right now, then yeah, sure. Uh, it sounds pretty promising. Um, certainly not that expensive, and you know the fact that Paramount and Lionsgate are potentially on board soon also sweetens the pot a bit could could do could do uh movies anywhere is available on android android tv amazon fire ios apple tv roku and chromecast and again uh it's voodoo itunes amazon and google play are the stores that are all part of the system if you want to go check it out uh what you also want to check out is our patreon we are supported entirely by you and one of the big reasons that we didn't take the week off when i was gone or when brian was gone is because you guys are out there supporting us and we appreciate that and we pay attention to that so big thanks to everybody who supports us at patreon.com slash cord killers uh a dollar out of your pocket means the world to us and makes it possible for us to keep doing this show every week so thank you for your support and if you haven't supported uh, as brian always says you'll barely miss it uh go check it out we got some perks at patreon.com slash cord killers let's talk about how to watch well more of you are watching on netflix than ever before netflix had their earnings report and added 5.3 million streaming subscribers worldwide that beat expectations of 4.4 million beat it by quite a bit actually uh netflix added 850,000 in the u.s which also beat expectations and 4.45 million internationally reed hastings now says netflix could spend as much as eight billion dollars on content next year netflix also hired monique mesh as its new vice president of global public policy she formerly had similar roles at Amazon, Cisco, and Intel, and she'll help Netflix deal with all the varying regulatory regimes across the 190 countries that it operates in. Uh, the range from tax schemes to programming requirements, uh, certain countries have to have a certain percentage of content come from within the country, net neutrality issues in various places. Uh, and, and Sarah, you pointed uh, us to a Variety article where it talks about Netflix's secret weapon and why they're spending so much money on this content. Well, it's funny. It's not much of a secret weapon when you look at numbers like, okay, 850,000 new subscribers in the U.S. Sounds great. 4.45 million internationally? I mean, that's where the company is growing. Um, and it's funny. Netflix, I mean, if you're from the Bay Area, it started in Los Gatos, which is like a little you know suburb of San Jose. It has become truly the force of... Uh, of 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 cord cutting content, for lack of a better term, and the fact that it's growing so much more internationally makes so much sense because it pours so much money into original content. But it's also very good at killing that content if it's not working. Yeah, because they don't have to keep something going on, right? If if it's not working, uh, they can no. just let it go. It's it, you're literally throwing spaghetti at the wall. Yeah, <laughs> which is and, you can do that if you're making all this money internationally. So it's like it seems like a a, a great situation for Netflix. I feel like a lot of people uh, say that one of Netflix's challenges is that they're losing the rights to content. As more studios start to realize the value of the content they have and the fact that the Netflix is sometimes a direct threat to their distribution channels elsewhere, they're pulling. So the most famous is that Disney uh, has ended a couple of its deals and, and will be putting its content on its own app, which is super smart for Disney. Netflix acknowledged that in this earnings call and said, yeah, that's why we're spending $8 billion on all this content, because we know that it's not going, it's not all going away right away, but the future of Netflix is not being the catch up service for other networks content. They're banking that the future of Netflix is, I want to see Stranger Things. I want to see Ozark. I want to see House of Cards and all the other things that they come up with. Do you, do you think that'll, that that can pay off for them? I do. I absolutely do. I mean, if Netflix is smart, which it, the company seems like it is at this point, you don't bank on a, a you know big 
Hollywood uh, enterprises working with you. They can take the content away at any point. Um, I'm not sure how many people are complaining about, oh, you know, a certain collection of movies went away on Netflix these days because of the original content. And that's what everybody talks about. So that's, it, it's, you know, that's, that's where you get power is being like, well, this is actually the place where you can watch the show and nowhere else yeah. rather than licensing deals with, you know, kind of, uh, beloved pro perhaps at times, but old content. And I, and I think, it's more of a reaction to headlines where people say, oh, crap, they're losing Disney. This is not good. And the fact of the matter is, well, sure, would it be better to have all the Netflix originals and all the Marvel movies and Star Wars? Yeah, but it's not what people are subscribing to Netflix for, and I think the numbers bear that out. They can announce a price increase and a subscriber increase at the, you know one, one week after the other. The, qu the question I wonder is, Netflix has a long road of growth internationally because they did move into 190 countries. But at some point, they're going to get to the end of that road. And we're already seeing the, the leveling of growth in the United States. They still think they can top a million in the United States next quarter, and maybe they will. Uh, but at some point, you're going to hit the number of people who want to have Netflix and you're not going to be able to grow. What do they do after that? Because they haven't diversified into any other fields yet. I mean, at this point, it's original content, right? I mean, that's the growth strategy. So if you can continue to introduce that and keep people as customers, maybe not so much grow, but keep customer base. Yeah. Then Stock market doesn't like that, though. Stock market wants to go, well, where else are you going to get money? Are you going to distribute these somewhere else? Are you going to spin off? I wonder if Netflix ever considers sub channels or my guess yes. would be merchandise. What? What? A Netflix mug? <laughs> oh, yeah. Not a Netflix mug. A Stranger Things shirt. A Stranger oh, I Things see you're saying. hat. Yeah, okay. Well, sure. Merchandise. Always a good revenue stream, but I don't know. Uh, Netflix theme parks, maybe? Oh, God. Yeah, that's probably ride right the around Oak the corner. Ride. Yeah. yeah. Amazon and Netflix theme parks. <laughs> Get ready, guys. <laughs> Amazon will let you in if you're a Prime member. Netflix will charge you. That's That'll be the difference there. <laughs> All right, let's move on and talk about what to watch in Under Surveillance. Like it's all about location, location, location. Under Surveillance. Obviously, we mentioned the last trailer for season two of Stranger Things is out. Uh, show returns October 27th. Uh, also, the sixth and final season of Longmire hits Netflix on November 17th, if you don't remember, Netflix took over Longmire from A&E in season four uh, and and saved it from cancellation. But now it's getting its its natural wind up in the sixth season. I've never watched this, but that's kind of the beauty of what's going on with Netflix pertaining to our earlier conversation is there's so much original Netflix content now that you won't watch all of it. Right. And you won't really think about the fact that Disney might, you know lose a few movies from the yeah for, for, from from the deep <laughs> I wonder library. I mean it, it would be interesting to put a filter on Netflix if you could that says just show me the originals if you would have enough to keep you watching Netflix if you would just continue I mean, to use they, them Netflix does a pretty good job of showing you that when you, oh, you yeah, know, they sure do. first launch the app certainly on Apple TV anyway like do you want to watch all the new stuff and I usually never even leave that area New trailer for Black Panther came out. Uh, that movie's not coming out till February 16th, but uh, this trailer is getting rave reviews because it's our first real look at the technology inside Wakanda. And I don't know about you guys, but I was I was pretty blown away by this. It's a it's a really action packed trailer, uh, especially in, in the second half of it. I I'm interested to see because we we only caught a, a little bit of this world in uh, in Civil War. Was that right? Um, or yeah. rather, Black Panther. Black Panther. Uh, this will be this will be interesting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this quite a bit. Uh, it's a, it's it's got an amazing cast as well, and that shines through in that trailer as well. Again, that one's coming out February 16th. All right, uh, let's talk about what we've been watching. Sarah, you went on a little uh, movie binge. I did actually. <clears throat> excuse me. Um. I uh, I spent the weekend catching up on some movies that everyone has talked about for months and I had not seen. I started with The Big Sick. Which... Everybody loves The Big Sick. What would you think of The Big Sick? 
I thought it was just okay. Oh, mm. I know. Those, I feel them so bad. words. I know. I know. It, um, not for me. You I know. I. I'm not sure what I didn't like about it. It just seemed to me like it was a sweet little movie that almost seemed like a TV movie or maybe something that would have been a Netflix original or I don't, I'm I'm not, you know, well, it was an Amazon movie, but I'm not, I'm not sure what I didn't like about it. I just thought it was, eh, you know, let's call it a B minus. You watched it at home though. I wonder if going to the theater makes the difference with this movie because Eileen, my wife saw it in the theater and she raved about it. She said it was amazing. It's not a really big, you know, it's not like a m- movie that yeah. you know has like a like a huge soundtrack <laughs> or anything or that anything. you would but but p- perhaps you would feed off the other people in the theater. I could see that. Yeah. I I felt like a I felt like a monster for not liking it more, but <laughs> I just didn't like it that much. All right, just what else didn't. did you watch? I also watched Baby Driver. I hated that movie and I had oh, to turn no! it off halfway through. <gasps> oh, Baby Driver. Sorry. It was so <laughs> bad. Okay, then no, you're not definitely not alone in this one. I like Baby Driver, but I know a lot of other people who did not like it. It's it's not terribly divisive, but there are diverse opinions. What didn't you like about it? Um, you know, it was weird. It was like <clears throat> there was something about the fact that this guy was named Baby and that reminds me of Dirty Dancing and like I couldn't get past that. And then I just thought it wasn't very good. It was just weird. Just um, it didn't hold your attention. No, yeah, it was, it was, you know, I, I know it's a heist movie, but somehow it like, I don't know. I was just like, I can't, I can't even finish this movie. This is so bad. So, um, so I'm sorry guys. It? I, you know, I'm yeah, really, really oh. kind of a downer, but I did watch the beguiled, okay. uh, which I also thought was pretty boring, but very well shot, a beautifully shot movie. Okay. So you watched three movies in your movie marathon and didn't really like any of them. No, I didn't. Not really. Uh, we need some recommendations for Sarah for her next movie. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like. Would you cheer me up, guys? Courtkillers at gmail.com. Uh, you know her tastes now. You have a sample of what didn't work. Maybe that'll <laughs> be instructive as to what worked. Anything else? Are you watching any TV series or anything like that? Um, I am. <clears throat> I, uh, gosh, what am I watching? Um, I know you watch Mr. Robot. We'll be talking about that on Spoiler in Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and... You know, I don't know. Um, not anything that I love. I like the show Survivor's Remorse. I don't know if you guys have ever talked about that. Oh, on, what's on that about? Queer. Um, it is about a family from Boston who moves to Atlanta because the guy becomes an NBA star. And it's a uh, it's funny. It's a comedy. What channel is that? <laughs> Where do you get it? I guess is what I should say. Plex. It just shows up. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Plex in a bit. Uh, but first, Bryce, what are you on the lookout for? I uh, spent just a little bit of time today watching uh, watching the, the first episode of this series. And, and I think we even showed the trailer uh, a few months ago when it was released. But it's Netflix's Mindhunter. Uh, it's set in 1977 in the early days of the FBI getting into criminal psychology and criminal profiling. Uh, and so you've, you've, it, it may, mostly follows this FBI agent, uh, Ford, who is, is trying to reconcile uh, uh, the, these new, this new breed of killers who seemingly have no motive or don't have an easy motive and uh, wanting to better understand them so that they can be caught easier and, and uh, can be better understood rather than just, you know, the police waving it off and saying, oh, he's disgruntled, ah, it's a jilted lover, ex-business partner, whatever. And it's 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 interesting. I, I, I really only got a chance to see the first episode, uh, but I've, I've heard a lot of really great stuff about it over Twitter over this past week, and it's 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 really interesting. The <laughs> a, a pilot episode where the main character uh, gets almost everybody he meets mad at him in the first episode uh, sets up is is setting up a little bit of a a little bit of a challenge to to hopefully get get on the on the right side of everybody and and come out on top and uh, I I think it's really cool uh, there's ten episodes of it now on Netflix they're hour long and uh, it's not for the kids so 
Is that? No, it's, it's well, that it's one thing that uh, blew me away this week. And, and I guess the reason Star Trek Discovery is on CBS All Access is the F word showed up in Star Trek for the first time ever, at oh, least wow. first time ever on a television version of it. Is it like that? N- no, I mean, it's it's a, a, a little bit, but it's also just a, a, an open discussion of kill. Oh, also, no. Also, there's a lot of gore. Uh, there's <laughs> ah, it's more of that. There's some, okay. there's a very extreme moment of gore within the first uh, 10 minutes or so. So it also has kind of a house of cards look, you know, it sort of looks dark and cold uh, in general. And I, I think David Fincher is an executive on this. I don't know that mm. he directed it, but he is involved uh in a big way on us so check that out. that's mind hunter on netflix it's all one word so excellent uh hey folks if you've got something you we should be on the lookout for email us cordkillers at gmail.com do it uh real quickly i want to mention i have another book coming out if you search around you can find it it's called pavaria i just published it Sunday. Uh, so the print version probably isn't available in bookstores or ordering yet, but I know the ebook is at least available on Amazon. Uh, and I haven't even added it to tomerrittbooks.com. So I'm giving you kind of an early, uh, early indication of it. It is about a colony starship uh, that <laughs> due to an ancient prohibition against powering its broken engines uh, only has a portion under power meaning a large part of the starship doesn't realize that it's a starship uh, because they've been living without full power for so long. Uh, a guy gets sent north to be to try to recover some notes that might be able to restore everything, and there are some powers that be that don't want him to discover that. So if this sounds like an intriguing story to you, uh, keep an eye out for it. You can search for it on Amazon. Pavaria, P-A-V-A-R-I-A, by TomMerritt.com. Oh, not .com, just me. It's not at TomMerritt.com yet, but I will put it up there soon. Anyway. Congratulations. That's... Well, thank you. Uh, hopefully well, you're welcome. That like looks it. so great. Yeah, Garrett Weinzerl did the cover. It looks amazing, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Good job, Garrett. All right, let's move on to the front lines. Front lines. Apple signed a deal with Steven Spielberg to reboot Amazing Stories, meaning there's very few things left to reboot now. Uh, it supposedly will be for 10 episodes. NBC owns Amazing Stories. So it's basically NBC, along with Steven Spielberg, doing it on Apple. And we don't know how Apple's going to distribute it either, whether it'll be a part of Apple Music, which is how they've done their originals up to date. But this is their first scripted drama. Uh, everything's been reality shows up to now, or documentaries anyway. I always complain about the fact that, you know, Apple puts everything still under iTunes or Apple Music. And this is just another example of being like, where is it going to go? In a weird place that doesn't make sense for Apple? (laughs) I wonder if they put it, (laughs) if I were Apple, let's put it this way. If I were Apple, I would put it in the Apple TV TV app. And then I would make it available from the iTunes store, uh, you know, for anybody to watch it on any device. But I would just have it show up as a recommendation on Apple TV. And if you own an Apple TV, you just get to watch it. Do you use the TV app on Apple TV? You know, I didn't used to. And I I, I upset a patron uh, of mine uh, greatly by not appreciating the benefits of the TV app early enough. But I, I just didn't see the use for it. I use it a lot now because I watch a lot of things through Hulu and it works with HBO, Stars, Showtime. So really the only things that don't show up are Netflix it becomes obviously deficient when I'm watching a show on Netflix, but for all my Hulu stuff, it's it's become my go-to. I don't even go into the app. I just highlight it, and it's like, oh, there's the next episode of Blackish. There's the next episode of Last Man on Earth, and I don't have to keep track of where I am anymore. You know, uh, maybe I should connect all of my subscriptions before I poo-poo it Um when uh, it, it first appeared, I was like, oh, this is a great idea. And then I was like, ah, eh, too hard. I'm not going to do this. Um, so so I don't actually know how it works. You on don't have to do basis. anything. If you watch on the on the apps that work with it, it just shows up. The problem is if you're watching on apps that don't work with it, those will not show up. It's kind of like, in, and this is maybe a weird comparison, but it's like, do I want my phone to just have like one app? for all my stuff. I'm so yeah. used to kind of swiping around. I think sure. psychologically, I don't really want it to be one app. I, I just like that it keeps track. 
That's yeah. the magic for me. It's it. I didn't like it at all until that started to happen. And I'm like, oh, I don't have to look around to find out what the next episode of Firefly is that I'm watching for Cord Killers. It just shows up because it's in Hulu. Great. Well, um, should we talk about Roku? We talked about yeah. Roku and we talked about Plex a little earlier in the show. Plex's live TV service has launched on Roku. I'm a Plex fan. I'm uh, very fond of it. The service handles over-the-air broadcasts and DVR functions that was already available on other platforms, um, Apple TV, for example. Um, so if you are a Roku person, it's part of the $4.99 a month Plex Pass service. Well, let me ask you this as a Plex user. Have you hooked this up? Are you using the over-the-air part? Uh, well, uh, actually, yes. Um, <clears throat> a friend of mine who runs a Plex server um, was super gung-ho about um, hooking it up to some over-the-air uh, news services. It works pretty well if you're interested in news that's happened in the last 12 hours. It's not the same as me actually using my OT antenna and just like watching local news or, you know, some broadcast well, You're talking network. about the Plex news service, which is different than this. This is this is the over-the-air service that'll just act like a DVR. Uh, correct. Yeah, exactly. And you just, yeah, you yeah. know, you kind of you kind of watch it when you want to. Um, Plex is great. I love it. Um, it's, it's, you know, if, if you have, if you have a big library and you want to host a server, obviously Plex does that, uh, you know, legally. And, um, it is, you know, you were talking about, uh, the TV app on Apple TV, kind of, uh, keeping everything organized for you. Yeah. Plex does the same very well based on stuff that you've watched in the past. Um, it's really good with, uh, kind of discovery and, understanding that's why you, you don't like. that's why you're not impressed by the tv app because you've been using plex i guess so i guess so i mean it's i mean i'm impressed but it's like yeah yeah i'm used to that yeah, yeah. i know how that works mm -hmm. uh well one thing that people did not like how it worked was hulu's live tv services lack of a grid view uh it would just like you would the idea was you would just search by the show you wanted to watch or you would go into news or sports for live stuff, and they weren't going to need to give you a grid view. Well, a lot of people said that was that was too confusing and difficult, and they didn't like it. So Hulu has launched a grid-like view for its live TV service. It's available on the web right now. They say it'll make its way to the other apps as well. I, I, you know, you mentioned that you had fallen out of love with Hulu a few years back. Did you ever start using it again? No, I didn't. Um, and honestly, original content was the reason. Um, there were some series that I blew through on Hulu that, I don't know, they either dropped it or they became active on Netflix or I don't even re really remember. But it just felt like $8 a month that I didn't need to spend. And yeah. uh, the fact that it's, you know, rolling out new features on a desktop version of this, like, I don't know anybody who accesses Hulu that way. Not that you're, you don't exist, but, um, it just seems, I don't know. Hulu doesn't do it for me anymore. Yeah. Fair enough. That's, that's the way it happens sometimes. <laughs> Back to Roku. The company completed its rollout out of a channel in the U S that aggregates free TV and movies from across Roku channels, plus some directly licensed from studios like Lionsgate, MGM, Paramount, Sony pictures, entertainment, and Warner Brothers, doesn't this sound kind of familiar? Ads mm. run before content and users have to choose to add the app. Yeah, so this is one of the things that I think studios are realizing they can do and why they're less likely to want to partner up with a Netflix is they can license with these free services that are ad supported and not do exclusives. Uh, so Vudu has a similar service. I mean, Vudu has its store, and that's what it's most known for. But there is also a free movie service in Vudu. You don't even have to uh, to pay for anything. You you could have never bought a Vudu movie in your life, and you can still watch their movies for free uh, in the store with an ad. And I've done that before. Their selection is okay. It's not the best selection ever. Uh, but you watch one ad, and then you watch the movie. And it looks like Roku's taking advantage of the same thing, but then adding in the fact that they have access to all these apps on the Roku platform so they can have a wider selection of things that are available. They can pull this, the movies that Vudu has, add it to the ones that they've licensed directly. And I think it's interesting that they're not forcing it on you, that you, you have to actually go in the Roku channel store and find that app. 
you know, that was one thing, you know, as much as I sort of poo-poo Hulu, it's, it's the ad part of Hulu never really bothered me. Um, and I, you know, watching an ad before content, it's something that I've been used to on YouTube for a long time now. So it's like, this does make sense as long as there's a library that people, uh, can't, care about uh, accessing. Yeah. I also know, I mean, having worked at Lionsgate recently that there are a lot of kind of SVOD packages that get tried out yeah. just because there's like, you've got licensing deals with other companies and you're sitting on this big library and what are you going to do with it? And let's see if people might pay $3 a month for it. So there's again, some not well proven revenue models that are being tried out maybe. at this point still. Yeah. Yeah. Experimentation being done. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to our dispatches from the front. Scott wrote in and said, Hey, Tom and Brian, longtime listener and fan. In the past two years, I've been using cable for local channels and PlayStation View for everything else. I'm about to close on my first house. Congratulations. Uh, so because of the impending move, I started to reevaluate how I cut the cord. First off, I looked up my antenna options because of the surrounding mountains. As of right now, basic cable will be used. But in a few weeks, I will mount a large antenna off the chimney of my new house, and hopefully it will work, and I can cut basic cable out of my plan, including the $12 per month DTA cost. Next, I am looking to beef up my Plex account, maybe to a lifetime Plex pass. The service has been growing a lot in the last year, and I've been impressed with the new additions. For services, I'm trying YouTube TV for CW content. I'm not sure if it will keep it due to the lack of the DIY and HGTV channels, and I do not want both YouTube TV and PlayStation View. I've been happy for the most part with PS View, but it has been several months since Sony and Viacom had their dispute, and when I signed up, I had all those Viacom channels, and I felt like I was getting an amazing deal. Now I feel like it's just an okay deal. I would pay another $5 with PlayStation View if they added CW Live and brought back the Viacom channels, and added the History Channel. But for the most part, I've been very happy with my cord-cutting experience. I thought History Channel was on PlayStation View. That's interesting uh, that he's not getting it. But yeah, CW is just doesn't want to do that. Uh, they they want you to use their CW app, which, by the way, if you didn't know, you can get a CW app. You can watch all the CW shows. You can't watch them live. And you have to watch them with ads, but you can get them for free. Uh, or they want you to pay for them. They want you to buy them from stores and stuff. That's kind of their way of uh, of doing it. Do you, you don't watch any of those CW shows, do you, Sarah? Um, name one. Maybe Supergirl, <laughs> Flash, Arrow. None of them. No. Nope. Riverdale yeah. mm -mm. or uh, nope. iZombie. Not a CW person, but I am a person who, uh, you know, I I understand the allure of cord cutting, even though, um, and this has actually been going on for years, at least with me. It's like I cobble stuff together, but somehow I still feel better about that than I do paint, you know, giving Comcast uh, a bunch of money to like cobble it together for me. Yeah. I, Bryce, I'm curious how you get the CW shows. Uh, I usually don't keep up with CW shows. I'll usually watch them after the fact on Hulu. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're not on Hulu anymore though. Uh, so it's been a while since you kept up. It's been a while. It's been a while. But they do have that CW app, which is a free ad supported thing. So I'd probably yep. do that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Josh wrote in and said, Hey, Tom and Brian, as you know, Hulu recently dropped their price for new subscribers to $5.99 a month for the first year with commercials. I just signed up for Hulu about a few weeks ago to binge The Handmaid's Tale. So I was pretty bummed to see them lower the price after I joined. But I decided to contact Hulu and see if I could get the new pricing, even though I'm a current Hulu subscriber. I was pleased to find out that they would give me the lower rate, no questions asked. This might not work for everyone, but you might want to pass this along to the other cord killers as a new version of Brian's chicken challenge. Like good, good, good on Hulu, at least in Josh's case, for just saying like, oh yeah, you didn't sign up that long ago. We'll give you the introductory price. Why, why anger a customer? Oh, it was an introductory price. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone should do this. Yeah. They're going to say yes. <laughs> I mean, I've been a Hulu subscriber now for three years, I think. Uh, so I don't know that they would give it to me. I kind of wouldn't expect it to, but maybe I'll try just to see. Although I pay for the commercial free version and the discount is only for the one with commercials. 
I don't know if I want to test this so much that I'll give give up the commercial free version. Uh, Steven writes in and says, Howdy, we've been internet only with phone, pacemaker monitoring, and 911 health reasons uh, on Time Warner Cable's fastest speed since Cord Killers premiered and have been eagerly awaiting Google Fiber's arrival. Every truck sighting elicits excitement. Our home is 12 miles from town center, nestled in a valley which, though within city limits, would necessitate an expensive roof-mounted antenna to get broadcast television. Since we have been streaming Google Wi-Fi Mesh using Chromecast and Roku's all this time, a speed quadrupling at two-thirds or less the cost is eagerly anticipated. If Google Fiber is not offering phone service anymore, are there other ISP services we could use? Uh, cheers, Stephen. This is an interesting cord-cutting phenomenon, right? Google Fiber no longer offering television or phone service. They're just doing internet now, uh, which that was the reason we talked about it on Cord Killers. But if you're someone like Stephen who's like, mm, we still need the phone service. Can't We can't give up the, the, the wired phone service. Uh, there, there are options out there. I mean, you could just go back to an old POTS line. They're pretty cheap. Uh, maybe it's not hooked up in your house. I don't know. But if you just need telephone service, that, that can be cheap enough if you got Google Fiber to make up the difference. Uh, there's also the possibility of getting some kind of, of VoIP service on its own, like Uma or Vonage or one of those. Uh, that depends on the price in your area. You can't, for 911, use anything like Skype or anything like that as a replacement, even though you can get a phone number. Um, I don't know how Google Voice works in these kinds of situations. I do know that there's a new uh, Amazon product that will let you hook up to a real telephone service, but I think you have to have the telephone service already. So anyway, interesting question, Stephen, and thank you for that. And thank you guys uh, for watching. Sarah Lane, thank you for being on. Oh, thanks so much for having me, guys. Um, I will come back anytime. I love talking about TV shows and movies. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to do some more on Spoiler in Time. If you want more of that, check that out, cordkillers.com as well. And of course, uh, you can find Sarah Lane and I every day talking tech news at dailytechnewsshow.com. Uh, anything to tell people about other than that or more about that or something? <laughs> um, I think that's uh, that's 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 plenty. <laughs> Yeah, if if you if you guys don't uh, listen or watch DTNS, please do. I am part of the show now every day, Monday through Friday. It's super fun and um, it's good stuff, yeah. especially if you like technology news. Come and check it out, dailytechnewsshow.com. Uh, that's it for us. Our website is cordkillers.com. Our email address is cordkillers at gmail.com. We're live on diamondclub.tv Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Brian will be back next week. And we will have a grand reunion, he and I. Until then, see you next time. Hey, guys. Tom and Brian here. We just wanted to say thank you to all of our $5 patrons who keep us loud, live, and independent. You guys make Court Killers the production that it is. Your name appears in the video credits and appears in our hearts. And if you'd like to become one of them or see who they are, you can go to patreon.com slash courtkillers. You'll need to do more than just go there, though. You'll have to sign up and, you know, pledge an amount. But Unless you just want to see who they are. Well, I mean, you can gawk. That's a little creepy, isn't it? If you want to be a gawker, just go. It's up to you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>